truly it says, what if we just sit with what is without judgment, judging right or wrong from it, right? So you just see what happens. Can we sit without having to fix your stories and just having your stories validated? Not even valid, just listen to. Oh, someone's listening to my stories. And they're not saying that they're wrong. They're not saying that they're right. They're just listening. They're giving me a place for me to be witnessed in my pain and my distress. And just know I have to do something with this right now. Just, just let's see what arises as you sit with that. And you recognize that as this less than hyper-masculine approach, this more feminine approach of just sitting with what arises here, it gives a little bit of space for things to move a little bit. And then we can just watch the movement without us saying it has to move. It has to move. It has to... No, we're giving it a little bit of attention, which is what we're not usually doing. You're usually saying you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You have to get out of there. You have... We're actually sending hate toward ourselves for what we have. And we're saying, what if we just sit back and just see what's there and give it a little bit of compassion and space. And we call this green lighting, sitting with our stuff as it's arising without having to change it actually allows things to shift and change, okay? They don't have to, they may not, but just, just giving it that potentiality allows for things to shift, okay? And so what do we do? We have this beautiful practice we call gazing, which we started with, right? And you have this teacher who's done most of their work, maybe not all of it yet, and you gaze with them. And you have a person who's looking at you with love and non-judgment. Think about your parents. Did you get that from your parents? Most likely not. So here you have for the first time really someone looking at you without expectations. There's no expectations on you other than you're arriving in the room and you want to gaze with him or her. Okay? And so the teacher also has an energetic resonance, right? That also you, your body, your subconscious mind starts resonating with. Oh, he doesn't have all these other little dots all over them. And his body is resonating in a certain way. Maybe if I start resonating like that, some of this stuff will go off me too without having to do anything. Just being in that field allows your body to start releasing things it no longer needs, right? To start mimicking and mirroring this teacher who is awakened in inner state. And you notice the teacher I have here also isn't completely embodied. As long as there's stuff going on, there's really not a complete embodiment here. There's always a little bit of shift out which is fine. The teacher recognizes this and they sit with that and they stay in their center as much as they can, but recognize that occasionally something's going to pull them out of center. And when that happens, the teacher works on it. This is what we do later in the work. We think we're done and all of a sudden, boom, something comes up. Oh shit, I didn't work on that. It's very subtle. It becomes more subtle over time. And so there's also what we call trans, you know, this transmission. Okay. And there's that, again, that mirroring that's going on that you automatically, you don't have to even think about. Your body just looks, your subconscious mind looks and sees the energy patterns, and then you start to mimic them, okay? And so what happens with this? We're working with our buttons. It's, remember, you're unwanting a lifetime ex experience on top of this button. And it typically, it typically begins with a detailed description of the events that followed, right? First, we deal with the mental aspects of what we're doing. What went on? This is what, this is what I perceived happened at that time. And then there's going to be, as you, as you get those words out, we may ask you, well, how does that feel? And you might say, well, I'm really sad. And now we may have found the intense emotion that's sitting there. We're not falling into it quite yet. We've, we're touching. We're, we're, we're sitting on top of this bubble here. Remember I said we bounced off. Now we said we've given a story, so we've allowed ourselves to stop here. I can't ask for help. I can't ask for help, okay? But right now you're asking for help. Is it okay? Is it okay? And you're sitting here and you've got a lot of sadness here associated with this one. That's a major emotion underneath it. Okay. Okay. But there's also some curiosity now. You're sitting here. There's always curiosity because I can't ask for help is associated with, I'm curious. I want to ask. So you're, we're hiding this curiosity. Okay. So as we start sitting on this, we become curious. What's the emotion I have? Well, it's sadness. And then we might ask, well, where does that sadness feel in your body? And you might say, well, my right calf. My right calf feels sad right now. Wow. Did you, did, would you have thought of that before, that your right calf could be sad? Because somehow or other, this button that's been pushed so gently that you've been allowed to sit yourself down on is trying to give you some information in a place that you're contracting on your body and saying, here, 
release the intense emotions around this. You're not going to be annihilated because we keep you in the adult. The child is the one who experienced this, but the child needs the adult, the parent aspect of itself to actually hold the emotion and allow it to express. So we start releasing the emotions around this. And we recognize that our defense mechanisms, these defense mechanisms that we develop to keep us from getting there, start unwinding. And we may find that we go through memory starting from very recent going to very old as we go through it, unwinding out of this. Okay, we released tensions associated with muscle constriction then. And our body feels more supple and we actually have more sensation in that region. And there becomes a reframing around this, I can't ask for help as, oh, I can ask for help. I can ask why. Questions are okay. I'm not going to get yelled at if I ask a question. People are answering me. And this also reflects on our intelligence and our self-worth. All, these, all of these things are tied. Remember, you just can't have one quality without all the other qualities being there. So even curiosity has intelligence and self-worth associated with it, right? And this leads to an integration of an unprocessed trauma. So what happens is we've cleared away a gap, right? We're clearing away the gaps. So what do we do? How do we ask you to do this work? We say, here's me coming into this work. Look for teachers. Start working with mentors. Find peers. Figure out what alternative health cares you need. The body workers that you might need, psychotherapists, community, maybe some of the new age stuff. Find out what you need. Get around you a healing group that you can get to when something gets out of balance because you're gonna get out of balance doing this work. Whenever any of these things are pushed, you're gonna get pushed up into here again, out of your body. And as you, the more and more you do this work, the more settled and more settled you get into this. So we want you to have a community. This is a thing, you know, people say, oh my God, they're, they're a cult. They're trying to tell you to only work within a community. No, but recognize that the people in the group understand this path. So the peers and mentors and teachers you wanna take from this group, it doesn't matter the alternative healthcare you use. It doesn't matter to body workers or to psychotherapists or even the community you want to work in. We're just giving you a place that people are mirroring what you want. Okay. And so we want you to make sure you take care of yourselves from Western medicine to alternative medicines, to the psycho psychological aspects, to the community aspects of finding people who resonate with you and can now become family more so than the people that you grew up with. And so what happens? You start going through this and you start releasing these traumas. Boom, boom, boom. I call this the preparatory reconfiguration, right? You're, you're, you're preparing yourself for an event to occur. And as you do this work, these gaps, remember there are a lot more, these gaps in your timeline start disappearing. It becomes continuous again, more continuous. And then what happens is one day, you've done so much work or so little work, it doesn't matter, in this group, you may have done 5% of the work that's necessary to actually get to really, really um, huge spaciousness. Or you may have to do 95% of the work, okay? <clears throat> but one day something happens. There's a, there's a permanent shift from here outside your head to, to whole body awareness again. This is what we call the whole being realization. You fall back into yourself. All three centers are now incorporated again. And you start living from those, those centers. You're not completely centered again, okay? But what's happening is there's been a shift from living in your limbic system to living from your prefrontal cortex. And now what happens is you can work from your prefrontal cortex in a rational, sane way and make foray, forays into the conditioning and the limbic system to release your buttons and your emotional traumas. And then you go back into your prefrontal cortex and experience the spaciousness that you receive by doing that work and the owning of your body. And remember, as you, the, your body is a self-healing system, the more we get out of the way, the more we stay in our center and don't try to do anything, the more it can heal itself. It will do all this work without us having to get in the way. But when you have this whole being realization, it is an event. This is a, what would probably be your third major realization from the one that first inside society's crazy to I got to find something that actually works to this one. Right, And this is a permanent shift in the way you experience the world. Typically, when people have this, they say, oh, my God, I've come home. And my second question after that was, holy shit, where have I been for 45 years? Right, And you realize, I've been up here. I've been out of my body. This brings you back into your wholeness because it incorporates all three centers. So now you're in a state like this. Okay, And now 
we're going to start going through our sacred reconfiguration. In the old days, they called this the wake down, shake down. Okay. You're going to go through stages of oscillating up into, into a trauma or down into a trauma, resolving that issue and then letting it go and then coming back into your more spaciousness. And so you're going to do this over the next four or five years, typically. Okay. Now, if you've done 95% of your work, it may not take that long. Okay. It may or may not. Okay. But if you're only done 15% of your work when this happened, right, you still have a lot of work to do. Okay. And it's, it's, and it's, don't think of it as work, but just think of it as there's more relaxation that has to go on. There's a lot of constrictions that you can look at and say, do I need to hold this any longer? And it's a choice. I can hold it because I feel safe with it, or I can say, well, let's explore it. What does it mean to be holding this constr- What What is going on here in my arm that feels so tight? And can I sit with that? Like I've been sitting with it and say, oh, I don't know what's going on. Or can you talk with me? And you realize that each of these qualities of our being has its own voice. Curiosity has its own voice. It comes out when curiosity needs to come. Curiosity comes out and says, why is the sky blue? That's curiosity speaking. That's not Jim speaking. That's curiosity speaking. And when someone says, well, what do you think? And I'll say, well, I think it's because, well, there's refraction from this. That's intelligence coming out. Each of our qualities has their own voice. So it's, it, we're not just made up of people. We're, we're not just not one of us. There's a wholeness in the ego mind, the ego is an actual quality of consciousness. It's the I-ness of consciousness that was usurped to, keep, to do all this over here on the left to keep us safe. But as it releases it, it says, oh God, thank you. I don't need to do that anymore. I can release that. It really, ego comes up and says, hi, I'm Jim. And now ego's job is done. It can go into the background and now the teacher can step forward. Hi, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching tonight and here's how I teach. I use slides. And I present in this way. And you can see, again, our timeline is becoming more and more continuous. And what we'll find is that we'll go through this sacred reconfiguration. By the time we're done, we're much, much more in our center than we were before. You know, there came a time when I, you know, I and my wife were walking and we looked at each other and says, wow, I was sad this morning. And all I said was, I'm sad. And I got up and said, okay. And I let the sadness be there. And I didn't have to do anything with it. It's like I didn't have to do anything with this button. It came up and said, I'm sad. And I said, okay, I, I appreciate you being telling me sad. And it's okay. I'm not going to do anything to stop you from moving. Do what you want to do. And we recognize that that's another shift in our being, another shift in our awakening when we realize we don't have to get caught up in the story of the buttons. It's just the, the body-mind healing itself. The body-mind getting rid of attention. That, that keeps it from running at optimal levels, okay? And so you know I have expanded states in, in body and physical experiences. I'm actually going to start talking about some of these here. So how do, this is this work. This is how this work goes. We, we, we talk about the story. So remember, we, we went from body to emotions to mentality growing up. Now we sort of do that in reverse. Here's the stories. Here's the emotional expressions around them. We're now owning. And here's the body reclaimed. We're actually going back in time as we take these buttons off our body, okay? And typically, we may have to tell our story four or five times before we really get an idea that it's been heard by others. We really want people to hear this. And with that story, there's an acceptance that now I can fall into the emotions, and I can own my emotions around it, which are very powerful. Some may be grief. Some may be rage. You know, when I was growing up, rage was anger, things like that was considered exceptionally destructive. And so you didn't get to express it a lot. And in my family, no tears. Tears are not allowed, okay? So it's owning that, oh, I can cry. Anger doesn't mean I'm going to destroy the world. It just means I'm angry right now, okay? And then with that, we can start owning our body again. Oh, the body's not bad. The body's not bad. I can reclaim my little body again. The little Jimmy can be reclaimed. He can be owned. He can be loved, right? So this is a path of self-love. So again, I said, this is what I call reverse process during the same. We're going backwards through time go down to each of our, of our buttons, releasing them, accepting them, accepting them, self-acceptance, self-love. This path is all about that. And your family will say you're narcissistic and self-centered. But this is the most self-loving act that you can do for yourself. 